As recently mentioned on a whip and chat, Louise and I are diamond painting on a lunchtime. So welcome to Stone Magpie. I'm Suzanne and let me introduce Louise. Hello, I'm Louise. <laughs> so we sat here on lunchtime. We don't have very long, so it will be a short video, but this is the picture that Louise is working on. And Louise has never done a diamond painting before, so I'm going to ask her some questions about how she's getting on. For those beginners that are a little bit daunted about getting started, what do you think, Louise? Um, it's, it's really good fun and it's, well, it's easy. You just follow the numbers. My first instinct actually was to flatten the canvas. It was quite crinkly because it comes in a box rolled up. Mm. Although it's that long ago, I got it. I can't actually remember how it came, but I'm pretty sure it was rolled up. So I popped it under my mattress for a while. I had forgotten it was there. <laughs> um, and then did remember when making the bed. Um, I won't say how long it was because you might think I'm really filthy. <laughs> But well, let's just say um, I had forgotten until I made the bed. And then I pulled it out and it was perfectly flat. So yeah, that was the first thing that I, I thought of to get it a bit flatter. When you first got the kit out, where did you start with it? Well, where did I start? Panic. Ooh, I thought, where do I start? <laughs> do I start at the top? Do I start at the bottom? But naturally, I wanted to start at the bottom. Um, that was my method. I, for, for whatever reason, I don't know. But when I brought it into work, I suppose with, with yourself being here, I, I kind of, you kind of helped me along. I think when I first started, I just opened a packet of whatever this shade was. There's actually two shades in here, two shades of purple. I'm just gonna show the packet. And I think the packet is still open in my drawer. This is one of the packets. So we, Louise was working from the packet, doing the darker blue in the background. And I did make a mess. They did kind of go everywhere and I could, I was picking some off the floor, off <laughs> me, off my chair, which obviously prompted uh, Suzanne to then think, right, we need to get a bit more organized and get them all popped in one of these tra um, trays with the pots in, which works much better. Um, but because there's so many in that one, I think we've left we've left those out yeah, haven't they were we bigger fuller packs so yeah. we decided that you could cope with two open packs and the rest would be kitted up didn't we yeah so far so good apart from i keep every now and then if they feel like i've put too much of this red stuff what is this red stuff the pink wax the pink wax yeah. and it kind of when i put too much if i don't put enough on I, I sometimes think i've got a diamond and it's not there and i've dropped it and then I feel like just now I've put too much on and it kind of get little flakes of it stuck on the top so I have yeah. to pick it off and kind of twizzle it around in my fingers but once I've done that a few times it's then perfect for a couple of lunch times worth and then I have to do another dip in the in the wax. Right so should we show Louise's wax on camera so you can see how many times she's dipped into the wax itself. There we go so you can see all the holes in the wax there. I'm not sure, is that average? Is that more than average um, it, for how much I've done? Or? It looks like you've used quite a lot oh, of dipping compared, but well it might be just that because you're only using a single placer at the moment, you're not using a multi-placer, are you? So, no. And maybe you just prefer to have it extra sticky rather than, like you say, go back and not pick up diamonds. There is a tip that I have where I have a bit of kitchen roll next to me right, and okay. I sort of dab the end of the pen onto it and squidge it off a little bit. But I think it's quite common to have these little trails of pink wax and I use like tweezers to pull it off as I'm diamond painting. So, you know, it is sort of a... People experiment with different types of waxes to see if we can avoid it and people right. use glue dots. Um, oh. or there's blue wax which I've just tried for the first time there are different stickies to have a go at as well that's good no I just use my fingers my fingernails to pick it off but I, I seem to have caught it all and if there's the slightest little bit you can't really tell I'm, I'm an amateur after all so you know this I is my know, first you know. time I mean <laughs> it's your first time doing it but you are really good you are very careful with where you're putting your diamonds and I know you don't feel like it's going quickly, but you, you're doing really well with it. Thank you. So with the colourways, 
and Louise is doing the black and white canvas but there isn't a lot of black and white it's more blues and greys so how are you finding the shading on it well I got really excited so I did a load I think it was a load of s's <laughs> I started with a load of S's and then in this section I thought when I've done my S's and I'm going to move on to what I think was an R and I got really excited that I was going to be putting in a different colour but then as I put them in I couldn't really tell the difference so I only got really excited when actually I'm putting in a shade of, of grey and so I'm on my second shade of grey. I can actually tell the difference though this time because this here, what I'm putting on now looks kind of like a silvery grey I don't know if it's the lighting in here but this one here definitely has more it has a bit it's darker but I feel like it's got a bit of the greeny tinge yeah I agree it's definitely got a green like in a it. khaki green yes but I can't just looking at the purpley blue I can't tell the difference between the two I can oh I right can see okay it, but maybe it's because I'm sat at the side of you rather yeah, than over perhaps. the top of yeah I get I get so that so one's quite a midnight blue and one's got a purpley blue to it as well mm -hmm. so you can it is worth changing your color because <laughs> you can tell yeah so it's all the shading to get that detail yeah so i'll be super excited when i do this like white and when i do the reds as well because there's not a lot of red so i'll be yeah yeah Will very excited <laughs> to leave the red to the right at the last or do you think you'll fill it in as you go along well I think my plan is after I've done this section is to flip it and then do that section and that has got red in it so I think I don't know I could very well change my plan mm. who knows I'm just winging it but yeah I think I will just to spice things up as well with a different color a very different color a bright color as well because they're quite it's not the most colorful picture no there's 20 colors in all isn't it but like you say that rather than call it color the sort of shades of yeah shades of gray louise yeah <laughs> <laughs> what is the book it's not 20 50, shades of gray. Oh, 50. 50 shades oh, of gray oh not work. that not that i read them or anything <laughs> <laughs> no you've got 20 shades of blue and gray and a bit of red thrown in um yeah because color for me is just it's amazing when you're changing the colors it just really lifts you lifts your mood and things so it'll be interesting if you do do another one and it's all different colours, how you would feel compared to the two. So we'll have to follow Louise's journey on that, I think, viewers, um, with these snack size lunchtime videos. So what are you planning to do with the picture once it's complete? Well, once it's complete, I'm hoping that it'll look great and that I will frame it. If, it's, if it looks good enough, I want to get it framed and give to my husband as a Christmas gift but it all depends on if I get it finished in time and also um, if it looks any good no I'm hoping it'll look good enough and I'll get a frame for it maybe just to make it bigger and a bit more drastic or maybe get a, mount, um, a mounted right. uh, frame as well but I'll probably take some of your advice Suzanne on uh, what kind of frame I could get yeah well I found a really cheap frame on eBay recently when I framed my elation picture which was an 80 by 60 wow. and that was £17.99 for the frame off eBay so I would probably send you in that direction if you're thinking of mounting it though that can be trickier okay you'd be very lucky to find the correct size for a mount um, but you never know you might be lucky yeah well all of the pictures and prints and paintings in my house have all been framed by the same it's a market stall actually oh. um near where we live and we took everything in there to get them all mounted and framed the same frames and they're they're all really nice they're all like a black they're, they're a black frame but with like a grain in them right and they've all got really good mounts yeah, so, so was that i could really do that expensive to do have you got any frame that are similar size to this um, I do actually, yeah, we've got a few things that are similar size. I can't really off the top of my head remember how much it was to do going down that route, but we took loads to this guy <gasps> on the market stall and we weren't shocked by the price or anything. We thought it was pretty decent what he charged us. But if I'm going to give this to my husband as a gift, it's 
well, it's quite difficult doing it rather than ordering off eBay or Amazon because we pretty much spend all of our weekends together doing yeah. things. Yeah. So you might strike it as odd that I've popped out um, to the market because it's about a 20 minute drive away. So I might have to do some stealth or get my mum and dad to take it down to the market stall. Yeah. We'll see. But as I said, it depends. I'll only put the investment in if it looks half decent. Yeah, Hopefully I mean, it will. Still, if you didn't want to mount, you could still frame it quite cheaply. It depends, like you say, what, if you're happy with the finish at the end and how pixelated you think it is. Because obviously the bigger diamond painting you go, the less pixelation you got. Yes. But I was really happy with mine. I thought it looked nice for the size. You get a lot of detail. And I really liked that um, tattoo on her shoulder, that your diamond painting now. If you do recognise this picture, I have completed the same one myself, so I will put the video in the eye and you can see the unboxing for that. Um, so I do know <laughs> a little bit about this diamond painting and I really thought for this size that the detail was good. The further back you stand away from a picture, the better it looks as well. <laughs> so when you do your judging on your framing, stand well back and see what you think. <laughs> Louise has got a home bar which has lots of school things in it so you want to stand at one end of the bar and look to the other yes although yeah. it's it's not a very big bar <laughs> but yeah I'll put it hold it up at a distance to have a look and see how it looks definitely and it'll fit just you know it'll fit right in in there I think yeah. with all the other school related things are you thinking of taking this home on an evening and doing some at home because you're so worried that you won't be able to complete it in 15, 20 minutes lunchtime bite size? Yeah, I think I will take it home um, just to give me something to do on an evening. And my, my husband, he does work away, or he can work away a lot. And for the next few weeks, he's away all week. So once the children are in bed, I would say uh, there's the perfect opportunity. You know, I can still pop the telly on and the lighting's really good in our living room if I can do a little bit whilst he's away and then just bring it back the next day to do at lunchtime as well I'm sure we can well we'll get there I'm hoping anyway otherwise I'll have to get emergency help from a friend that um <laughs> can, di that can diamond paint <laughs> if you know anybody I am thinking of bringing another kit in for myself to do a smaller kit. You may well have seen a recent unboxing for the budget diamond paintings that I bought from Amazon. I'm not quite sure yet which one to bring in. I may well do a survey on the community tab to see which ones that you think would be your favourite ones. So watch out for that um, because it's no good me just watching Louise. I've got to do my own as well. So have you got any tips for any new beginners that are watching today to see how you're getting on with your very first diamond painting? Tips. Get a friend that will organise all of your diamonds into little boxes and put the codes on. Yeah, that's great. It saves a lot of time. One tip I would definitely say, because I am constantly keep finding myself getting stuck to the canvas. I'm assuming that's normal, or yeah. am I just being too heavy-handed? <laughs> When I first started doing it, I had my sleeves rolled down, so I'm wearing a, a fleece for work, and it's quite fluffy. We have a, a uniform at work, <laughs> so we're both wearing fleeces, we're both twins. We're both yeah. ninjas, all in black. <laughs> and when With I kept leather getting... safety boots on, I have to <laughs> yeah. add. Yes. My arm, when I kept getting stuck on the canvas, it was leaving a bit of fluff on the canvas and I was having to pick it off with my fingernails and it was re really rather irritating. So now my uh, first thing I do before I start is roll up my sleeves so that I don't get my clothes stuck and bits of fluff everywhere. That is a really good tip and one that I've never mentioned before about rolling your sleeves really? up. Really? Do you, yeah, do no, you no. not roll your sleeves up or do you? No, but I use release papers, so I'm doing smaller sections. So by using release papers, which are, they cover up the canvas and then you're just peeling off one section at a time, it reduces the amount of stickiness that's exposed. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I mean, we could Ooh. always, we could <laughs> always, when you go to the next half, put some release papers on for you and see if you okay. quite enjoy 
doing sections it depends on how you want to work on it whether you prefer to have it all exposed so you can just keep going with one colour rather than chopping and changing all the time yeah well I'll see um, how I get on yeah I could at least try it and see if it's any better lost one yeah right do you know what I've, I've pretty you much done colour? yeah there's yeah. a couple right oh I'm stuck again there's a few do you know I only need maybe about six and then I'm going to move on to another colour very exciting okay so what will the colour be the colour will be <laughs> the colour V <laughs> another shade of grey right there we go just need a few I might have to pull some back in so I'll finish these U's off I know there's more U's up there but I'm just gonna yeah focus and this is what this I mean bit. about the sections sometimes you may prefer to have them all exposed so that you're not having to go to your tubs all the time or if you don't mind that then you can do little sections and then it stops the sticky so it's it depends on how you prefer to work really yeah I just feel like I'm shaking things up by you know switching around although I've just noticed I've got one, two, three R's over here. And I don't know how I've managed to miss them. Oh, I've done R's up it's here. It's the fairies. The fairies make I think you someone's been, I think someone's picked them off since I put them on. <laughs> I think someone's sabotaging my diamond painting. <laughs> how dare they? I know. It's terrible. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I'm going to finish these U's and then I'm going to go on to the V's. Then after that, well, we're getting lighter actually. So it is getting more exciting. Different colours. Are you intending to go from darker to lighter then, or is it just how it's <laughs> no. progressing? No, it just seems to be how it's progressing. There was no intention. I had no idea how I was going to go about it at all, really. I just kind of picked up a colour and cracked on. So what about when you get to this area, sorry, this area here, mm -hmm. what about trying your multiplacer? Well, you keep going on about this multiplicer, I know, and I feel <laughs> I feel like I'm letting you down if I don't give it a go. So, I will give it a go. I'm if not you like. pushing you. I just think once you get going with it, with a little bit of practice, you'll find it so much quicker. Yeah. And then I think you won't look back, and you're so carefully place your diamonds that I don't think you're going to have a big issue. And if you try it and you hate it, you can either pick them off; it doesn't matter, or you know you can go back to your single placer. So, okay, yeah, I'll definitely give it a go. I promise I will have a go. I'll let you teach me how to use the multiplicer and we'll, we'll see how I get on. Right, that's me done for use now, I think. So you may notice that Louise is actually working with the very basic diamond painting kit that came with this diamond painting. So she's not even using multiplicers at the moment and she's using a green tray I have promised that I might upgrade her to a white funnel tray. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she probably finished it by the time I remember to bring one in. But but you're getting on okay with those though, aren't you? Yeah, I'm quite happy with my progress mm -hmm. and I'm happy doing it. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Thank you very much for introducing me to diamond painting. No, that's good. It's, it's nice to have another diamond painter on board, isn't it? Anyway, we have run out of time this lunchtime, so we will see you again another time, I'm sure. Thank you, Louise. It's been really interesting to hear your views. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, thank you for having me on your show. <laughs> so we'll see you again. In the meantime, enjoy your own diamond painting. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Do you wiggle? Oh. Yeah. <laughs>